Okay, this is the management of acute area at home using plan A. And uh, these are the learning objectives. So after you study this session, you will be able to define the types of diarrhea. Assess diarrhea in sick children. Assess dehydration in young infant and sick children. Classify diarrhea and severity of dehydration using IMSA charts. Treat diarrhea, no dehydration at home using plan A. So what is uh, diarrhea? Diarrhea occurs when stools contain more water than normal and are loose or watery. In many regions, diarrhea is defined as three or more loose or watery stools in a 24 hours period. Children between the age of six months and two years often have diarrhea. It is the more common in setting of poor sanitation and hygiene, including a lack of safe drinking water. So what are the types of diarrhea in children? One, acute diarrhea is an episode of diarrhea that lasts less than 14 days of duration. Acute diarrhea causes dehydration and contributes to malnutrition. The death of children with acute diarrhea is usually due to dehydration. And the second type of diarrhea is persistent diarrhea. This is a type of diarrhea where it lasts 14 days or more. So up to 20% of episodes of diarrhea becomes persistent and this often causes nutritional problems and contributes to the death in children. And the third type of diarrhea is dysentery, is a diarrhea with blood in the stool, with or without mucus. The most common cause of dysentery is Shigella bacteria, and amoebic dysentery is not common in young children. And a child may have both watery and dysentery. So when you come to the assessment of diarrhea and dehydration, so the first step that we have to do is ask the mother for diarrhea. Does the child have diarrhea? If the mother answers no, ask about the next main symptoms, for example, fever. If the mother answers yes, or if the mother said earlier that diarrhea was the reason for coming to the post or health facility, record her answer as diarrhea. Step 2. Ask the mother to assess persistency. For how long has the child had diarrhea? And here you have to give the mother time to answer the question. She may need time to recall the exact number of days. And under the step 3, we have to ask the mother to assess the entry. Is there blood in the stool during this episode of diarrhea? And the fourth step, we have to check signs of dehydration. So that first we have to look at the child's general condition. When you check for general danger signs, you check to see if the child has lethargic or unconscious. If the child is lethargic or unconscious, he has a general danger sign. Remember to use this general danger sign when you classify the child. Diarrhea. A child is classified as restless and irritable if she or he is restless and irritable all the time or every time she is touched and handled. If an infant or child is calm when breastfeeding but again restless and irritable when she stops breastfeeding, she or he has the sign restless and irritable. Many children are upset be just because they are in the clinic. So usually these children can be consulted or 
calmed and don't have this sign so the other thing is we have to look for sunken eyes the eyes of a child who is dehydrated may look sunken so that we have to decide if we think the child if the eyes are sunken then ask the mother if she thinks her child's eye look unusual so that her opinion can help us confirm and next we have to look to see how the child drinks ask the mother to offer the child some water in a cup or a spoon watch the child drink a child is not able to drink if he is not able to suck or swallow when offered a drink so a child may not be able to drink because he is lethargic or unconscious a child drinks poorly if the child is weak and cannot drink without help he may be able to swallow only if fluid is put in his mouth a child has a sign of drinking eagerly and acts thirsty if it is clear that the child wants to drink look to see if the child reaches out for the cup or spoon when you offer him water when the water is taken away see if the child is unhappy because he wants to drink more if the child takes a drink only with encouragement and does not want to drink more he doesn't have the sign drinking girly and thirsty next we have to feel by pinching the skin of the abdomen this skin pinch test is an important tool for testing dehydration when a child is dehydrated the skin loses elasticity to assess dehydration using the skin pinch first we have to ask the mother to place the child on the examining table so that the child is flat on his back with the arms at, the, at his sides not over his head and his legs straight or ask the mother to hold the child so he is laying flat on her lap second use your thumb and first finger to locate the area on the child's abdomen halfway between the umbilicus and that of the side of the abdomen don't use your fingers because this will cause pain the fold of the skin should be in line up and down the child's body third we have pick up all the layers of the skin and tissue underneath them fourth we have to hold the pinch for one second then release it fifth look at to see if the skin pinch goes back very slowly more than two seconds slowly or less than two seconds but not immediately or immediately if the skin stays up for even a brief time after you lose it decide that the skin pinch goes back slowly the photographs below shows you how to do the skin pinch test and what the skin looks like when the pinch does not go back immediately and six we have to offer the child a fluid is the child not able to drink or drinking fully or is the child drinking eagerly or thirsty so that we have to offer the child some water in a cup or spoon in usual toast then we have to watch the child drink a child is not able to drink if he is not able to suck or swallow when offered a drink a child is drinking poorly if the child is weak and cannot drink without help and a child has the sign of drinking girly or thirsty and the child went to drink and next we have to determine the degree of dehydration so to classify the child's dehydration begin with the pink or top row in the chart entitled does the child have diarrhea 
if two or more of the signs in the pink row of the table to the left are present, conclude that the child has severe dehydration. If two or more signs are not present, look at the yellow or the middle row of the same chart. If two or more of the signs are present, conclude that the patient has some dehydration. And if two or more signs from a bitter row are present, conclude that the patient has no signs of dehydration. This child doesn't have enough signs to classify as having some dehydration. So that some of these children may have, may have one sign of dehydration or have lost fluid without showing signs. So this is the IMNHR chart, which can be used to determine the levels of dehydration. So these are the signs. So if two of the following signs are present, we can classify the case or the patient as having severe dehydration. And if there are no two signs here under the pink row, we have to go downward to the yellow row. And then if there are two signs here, we can conclude that the child is with some dehydration. If there are no two signs here, are not present here, we have to go down. And if there is no enough sign to classify as some or severe dehydration, the child is said to be having diarrhea but no dehydration. But out of this, if the diarrhea lasts 14 days or more, so we have to use this door and then diarrhea lasting 14 days or more can be classified as perceivable persistent diarrhea. And if blood in the stool and we call it the child with dysentery. And next we have to select the appropriate treatment plan based on the degree of dehydration. When you classify the severity of dehydration, you should identify you identify the appropriate treatment to replenish fluid or prevent dehydration. There are three plans to provide fluid and replace water and salts lost in the area. So that plan A is a treatment of the area at home. Plan B Treatment some dehydration with low osmolarity or oral dehydration salts or ORS. Plan C, three severe dehydration quickly with intravenous or IV fluids. So what are the four rules of home treatment or planning? The four rules of home treatment are very important to remember. One, we have to give extra fluid as much as the child will take. Second, we have to give zinc supplement. Third, we have to continue feeding. And third, we have to advise the mother when to return. So, under the first rule, we have to give extra fluid as much as the child will take. So that uh, the child will be uh, rehydrated. So, uh, under here, we have to tell the mother she has to breastfeed frequently and for longer at each feet. If the child is exclusive breastfeed, give ORS in addition to breast milk. If the child is not exclusively breastfeed, give one or more of the following. You can give ORS solution, food based fruits such as soup, rice water, yogurt drinks, or clean water can be given. And teach the mother how to mix or give ORS so that we have to give two packets of ORS to use at home. So that we have to tell the mother to mix one sachet of ORS with one liter of clean water and she has to give this solution to the child frequently. And we have to show the mother how much fluid to give in addition to this one fluid intake. So up to age up to tears, we can give 50 to 100 ml after each stool, or 
children of two years or more can take 100 to 200 ml after each lustral. And remember, tell the mother to give frequent small sips for makeup. If the child wants, wait 10 minutes, then continue, but more slowly. Continue giving extra fluid until the hair stops. So this uh, diagram shows how we have to teach a mother to mix or provide her child the fluid. So here we have a container. This is the water. And here we have a spoon. Here we have a liter of water. A liter of bottle of water. And then finally we have to mix the one liter of bottle of water with that of the ORS and then finally we have to mix it and she can give the solution to her child. Rule number two, give zinc supplements. Zinc treatment can considerably reduce the duration and severity of a child diarrhea episode. It is also shown to increase small stool output and decrease the need to hospitalize a child with diarrhea. Zinc is only given to a children two months up to five years. So under this, uh, zinc supplements, one tablet which is 20 mg, remind the caregiver to give zinc supplement for the full 10 days. So that tells the caregiver how much zinc to give. So if it is up to six months, she can provide half tablet per day for 10 days or if the age is six months or older she can provide one tablet per day for 10 days show the caregiver how to give zinc supplements for example for infants she can dissolve the tablet in a small amount of breast milk or is cream water in a small cup or spoon or older children Tablet can be chewed or dissolved in a small amount of clean water in a cup or in a spoon. Rule number three, we have to advise the mother to continue, to continue feed the child. So what foods? If the child is breastfeeding, breastfeed more frequently and for a longer at each feed. Give the child above six months of age foods with the highest amount of nutrients and calories related to bulk. Relative. Depending on the child's age, this should be a mix of cereal and local available beans or mixture of cereal and meat or fish so that add oil to these foods to make them energy rich. Dairy products and eggs are also suitable. Fruit fruits, juices, banana are helpful because they contain potassium. Rule number three, and we have to avoid high fiber or bulky foods such as coarse fruits and vegetables, fruit and vegetables, meals, whole grain cereals, because these are hard to digest. Very dilute soups, these are recommended as foods but are not sufficient as food because of they fill up the child without providing sufficient nutrients. Foods with a lot of sugar should be avoided. These foods can worsen the area. Rule number four, when to return. We have learned the science when a caregiver should return immediately to a health worker or health facility. Tell the mother of any sick child that the signs to return are not able to drink or breastfeed, becomes sicker or develops a fever. If the child has diarrhea, also tell the mother to return if the child has blood in stool. Drinking poorly also includes not able to drink or breastfeed. Thank you. This is all for today.